some reason, uh, Fedora 16 has two different login screens that sometimes hang up. And it's not as when it's causing the problem. Yeah, well, this is actually Rawhide Fedora, which is the daily operating system, which hasn't been updated in two weeks because it's too risky to re-every my login screen. All right, let's just kill it. <laughs> there it is. <coughs> Now this time I better hear some oohs and ahs. Ooh. Oh, that, 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 that. You gotta wait till I pull the rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> okay, so in in rel six we've added uh, SU Linux awareness to the sudo command. So in rel five, in order to do confined uses of confined administrators, you had to do a new role command followed by a sudo command, and that was just way too many characters for me to type. So we implemented in uh, sudo the capability of changing SE Linux roles. And what I've set up here in uh, web admin T is available, web admin T and sys admin T is, is available in rel 6. And what you can do is you can set up your user to be coming in as staff T, and then when it goes through sudo, it can change to a different role. So. If you say, read these three lines, I say if you run sudo edit, um, it'll run a sysadmin t, same with bin shell. But if I run bin case shell, I'm going to run this web admin t. So if I look at this process, which is the one I usually run, sysadmin t, I sometimes call sysadmin t the drunken unconfined t, because you can do anything you can do as unconfined t, except you trip over stuff every so often. Um, but some people like sysadmin t because it's a little more confined than unconfined t. Okay, so here I am as staff T. Oops, here we go with the fingerprint reader. Yeah. Use a gummy bear. Yes. <laughs> I swear to God, I've done this presentation in the last two weeks, since a week ago Tuesday, I've been doing this type of presentation. Every single time I get in front of a crowd, the fingerprint reader stops reading. Two hours from now, that fingerprint reader will not work 100%. I think it has to do with sweating. Sweat. <laughs> yeah. And it's the nervousness of doing it in front of a crowd. Okay, so I went through sudo and I ran K KSH. And I am now running as web admin T. No? <laughs> okay, so the first, the first thing you have to do when you run kshell is actually execute sh because no one knows what the commands to use in kshell are. <laughs> okay. And so I'm still, just to show I'm still web admin t, and now I'm going to touch a file. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there I am as root, and I'm getting permission denied, so I'm creating a file. And guess what I can do in this directory? <laughs> the reason for that is I am a web admin. A web admin can manage all the labels that are available to the Apache process. So it's able to, lock, lay, to execute or run uh, commands on anything that's in labeled HTTPD. Now this allows me to run the greatest system administration tool ever invented in the history of Unix. And everybody can tell me what that is? Yeah. yeah I... No, Emacs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I can run VI, I can run Emacs, Oops. I can run SED, I can run any tool I want inside of this context because when I, I don't care what I'm running, I'm only able to manage the types that I'm allowed to manage. So that's what a confined administrator is in SE Linux terms, sometimes called role-based access control. But basically we can, with web, you guys can all run home now, install your rel 6 boxes, set up your user account as staff T, um, and log in as web, my, you know, web admin T and get a whole room of about 50 people to go, ooh, see? <laughs> so you can start and stop the Apache server, you can turn the screen, screen yellow. <laughs> What is it about you guys? I don't know, it's your laptop. Actually, maybe it is my laptop. Uh, it's where you stand on. Oh, yeah. is that? 
Connector. I gave this. I gave. Well, I gave this presentation to uh, back in the office to um, some government people, and we had a. Uh, there was a loose connection on it, and the screen was constantly turning colors and flashing. And so I, th I think they were sick by the time they left, but maybe, <laughs> maybe that was my presentation. So anyways, you can do things like confined administrator. Now the big thing about confined administrator is most of you guys are probably doing it through sudo if you're going to do it at all. And you, you do things like write a shell script that, you know, I can, uh, I don't know, uh, I can start and stop a service through a shell script right here. Uh, allow this, uh, our administrator can reboot the, or restart the Apache service that gets hung. Well, the problem with that is that if that all-knowing administrator figures out a way to get that shell script to break, he might be able to get root access on the machine. Now we have found that Python had a bug in it. It isn't a bug in Python, it was a bug in sudo. That Python will read, Python actually reads, searches a dot .local uh, user live Python 2.7 directory tree in your home directory. And it will gladly use shared libraries in that directory instead of using the system ones. So if you were using Python as your little control app to run out of sudo, sudo forgot to change dollar home to be root instead of home. So when you run sudo, I think prior to rel 6, we actually, you would actually have the ability, an administrator would have the ability to take over root just by you running Python. Um, so with this tool, you can match that up with your tool and guarantee that all he's able to do is modify files in the Apache uh, directory or restart the Apache server. So that's the end of my presentation. Any more questions? Yes? How do you cope with uh, configuration tools like CF Engine or Puppet? To, uh, how do we cope with them? Yeah. We to, love them. Yeah, but, but to, to configure this and uh, keep it all clean. Well, in Fedora infrastructure right now has about 100 machines. They're all managed by Puppet, and Puppet's managing the SE Linux. SE Linux is just nothing more than a few commands and, and you know, command line commands and blobs, you know, Python modules. So what we do with Puppet is we actually have it um, check to see if SE Linux is enforcing, if the correct booleans are set turned on, um, things like make sure the policy has been installed, and, and so it's all done with Puppet. As I said, it's SE Linux to me, the question I've been getting all week is how do I manage SE Linux? And I usually come back to say Puppet, CF Engine, Tivoli, whatever your favorite management, Red Hat Satellite if you want to you know, do it with that, whatever your favorite management tool is, it's not, not my job to manage the 100 SE Linux machines. It's not SE Linux's job. SE Linux is a configuration, and the configuration should be managed by the management tools. So I've actually been fighting for years against building an SE Linux management tool. One, I'm not smart enough, and two, it's not my job. 